Welcome to our show, Health and Wellness Myths and Facts. I'm Ambika Singhkama. For a long time, women's health has sadly not received attention due to a variety of reasons. Primary among them is the tendency of women to keep their health needs at the bottom of their priority list. She always prioritizes the health of her father, her brother, husband and kids before taking care of herself. Women age between 35 to 54 years who often act in many roles including mother, caregiver for elderly parents, homemaker and breadwinner experience significantly higher levels of stress than men. Chronic stress and anxiety can lead to various chronic disorders such as diabetes and heart disease. Prevalence of chronic disorders is increasing day by day in women. It is imperative that women's health is given due focus and attention so that the overall health of the family remains well. Today we have a panel of experts who will discuss women's health in detail. So if you have any questions you would like to ask them, please send them to us via WhatsApp. The number is plus 91 9167666941. That is the number to send us your questions for our experts. Please also send us your name and your location. Let me introduce our guests. We have with us Dr. Kalpana Dash, endocrinologist Apollo Sugar Clinic, Raipur. Dr. Preeti Sharma, Associate Director, Interventional Cardiologist, Max Super Speciality Hospital, Dehradun, and Dr. Sarita Rao, Senior Intervention Cardiologist, Director, Cath Lab, Apollo Hospital, Indore. Thank you all so much, doctors, for joining us today. I would like to start with you first, Dr. Rao. You know, when it comes uh, to women, we're discussing women. If one suffers from hypertension, one is more likely to experience mood swings, anxiety, and depression as compared to people with normal blood pressure. So when, specifically if I ask you for women, can hypertension cause anxiety? So that's a very interesting question. You know, hypertension and anxiety, they both go hand in hand. So if you have high blood pressure, there are chances that you will be worried about your future, about your health, and that can lead to uh, anxiety levels being increased. And when you are anxious about your health, also hypertension also produces symptoms like headache or sometimes you have a symptoms like a blurring of vision or you have a pressure shoot and you get very anxious so yes people with hypertension tend to have higher levels of anxiety and when they get anxious and they have higher levels of anxiety it also produces an increase in the heart rate a further constriction of the blood vessels and that would lead to a further shoot of your blood pressure now having said that if you are an anxious uh, gentleman or a gentlewoman, so if you are an anxious person, there are chances that you might develop hypertension because um, anxiety per se produces a rise in the blood pressure. In most of the people, it's temporary. But if you have chronically increased levels of anxiety, this can have effects on your target organs like your heart, your kidneys, your brain, and subsequently you might develop a chronic hypertension so yes anxiety and blood pressure they do go hand in hand they go hand in hand i think that's why it's important that one takes care of anxiety so that hypertension can also be controlled dr sharma hormonal cycles can affect women's cardiovascular health estrogen is protective of the heart as estrogen relaxes the arteries and promotes good cholesterol so will estrogen replacement therapy help reduce the risk for heart disease so uh, because of the fact that we think that estrogen is uh, helpful so it was once thought that it could probably protect heart diseases but as a matter of fact females who took hrt for a long time they were more prone for having heart diseases strokes gallbladder diseases breast cancers uh, so uh, the risk actually outweighs the benefit of this therapy that is why hormone replacement therapy is actually not recommended nowadays for prevention of uh, coronary artery disease in women. Okay. Okay, Dr. Rao, if we talk about physical exercise, we know that is really important for everybody and it keeps us fit and fine. So can exercises relieve stress since we were talking about anxiety? So what, what are your thoughts on that and which are the best and safe exercises for women with hypertension and heart disease? So exercise actually is a very wonderful thing. You know, it's one of the best strategies that you could have for combating heart disease, for combating your stress levels. Because when you exercise, you improve the quality of your life, both mentally and physically. So what happens when you exercise actually? It increases the blood flow. It also increases the capacity of your body to provide oxygen. 
At the same time, it strengthens your immunity. It improves your physical appearance. It gives you a better uh, sense of well-being. At the same time, it lowers your blood pressure levels. It gives your confidence a boost. And when you exercise, you know, there are these uh, feel-good neurotransmitters which are relieved and which give you the high which runners experience. So exercising all in all is a very good thing that you must do. Now the American Heart Association, they have recommended that every person must get at least 150 minutes of exercise in a week. We normally divide it into 30 day intervals uh, for five days in a week, but you can schedule it as you want. But the most important exercises that we think of talking about, which you know do not require any equipment, you can do it anywhere, would be like brisk walking, like running, jogging, okay. cycling, swimming, or it could be just as simple as gardening, which you enjoy, or dancing, which you enjoy. Mm -hmm. So the important thing about exercise is choose something which you enjoy. Yeah. Have an yeah. exercise buddy who motivates you and incorporate it into your daily schedule. Yes, I think that's a very important thing what you said that one should enjoy whichever form of exercise they do, not just do it like a routine, but enjoy it. Uh, Dr. Preeti, you know, we were talking about how women are more prone to anxiety disorders and they do tend to take more stress because they do have a lot on themselves. So why are women more prone to stress? That's a very basic question, but we see that all around us. So, uh, yes, nowadays, uh, uh, apart from the home front, now we are working, we are handling some stressful situations, we are, some, some of us are heading few offices. So now women are not confined to only home, now they are taking care of other things also, they are career oriented. But you cannot, you cannot actually left behind any part of yours, like you cannot left behind your kids, you cannot left behind your home. So you have to manage all these things. So one person managing all these things, taking care of all these things and want to be perfect in everything. Mm -hmm. So this kind of stress uh, actually uh, leads you more prone for anxieties and this perfection and everything because you want to take everything along. So this actually creates a kind of stress on women which nowadays are experiencing because of career as well as managing them. So yeah, I think it's important yeah. that one, you know, there has to balance it, of course. But you know, just a further question which I would like to ask you, you know, we've spoken about why women tend to have more stress, why do they have more anxiety? But uh, I mean, how should they manage it? We have spoken about how exercising can help them, it's good for the physical as well as mental well-being. But how do you think women can cope with this? Because that will help a lot of our viewers understand how to really manage anxiety and stress. So yes, very good question. When Whenever you are managing home as well as you are managing your offices, so it is very important to just uh, take care of yourself, take out some time for yourself. And how do you do it? As Dr. Sarita mentioned that you can just have a morning schedule of uh, brisk or going for cycling, yoga, meditation. So these all things, they help you in relieving stress. And apart from this, uh, your favorite music, like listening music, dancing is a great stress buster. And you can indulge yourself in any kind of art or anything you enjoy. Or uh, watching a movie can sometimes help you in releasing these kind of stress. Okay. And now what we have realized in these recent times is after COVID, that the very important is to have a good social support group. Your friend, they... Uh, from offering a supportive way to lending a helping hand whenever you need them so, and it has been seen that people who have good social support they are less stressed they are more happier and healthier okay i think those are some great points uh, moving on Do dr rao you know regular health monitoring is key to keeping away from major chronic disorders but women again are way too busy you know looking after others and they forget about their own health at what age do you suggest that women should start doing regular health checkups screenings and what screenings do you suggest and what screenings are a must? So uh, I'll say, you know, no age is too early. Okay. So generally, uh, we recommend that everybody who's above the age of 45, they need to be screened for cholesterol. But sometimes we say that you actually need to start after the age of 30. You should get yourself screened. And we have, you know, uh, customized health checks for all of these uh, screenings. So women, they need to go in for getting their cholesterol checked, their blood pressure checked, their blood sugars checked. They also need to get a pap smear done. Also, if you have a family history of heart disease, you would require to get a 
treadmill test done and an echocardiography done. So it's important that you get your, you know, you know your numbers. You know what's your blood pressure, you know what's your cholesterol level, you know what are your sugar levels. It's important that you also look at the, uh, the side of being a woman. You also get a mammogram test and you also get a pap smear test done. Although I'm a cardiologist, I would say that those are also equally important things. Because even though heart disease is the number one killer in women also, it's closely followed by cancers also. So I think it's very important that you go in for one of these uh, healthy heart checks or an executive health checkups, which we as hospitals, hospitals like mine at Apollo, we have this subsidized health check for women, which they should come in annually. Once in a year, give some time to your health your body because you as a woman are extremely important for the well-being of your family absolutely i think that is a very very important point which you've put out there dr Rao, just i would like to ask of course we know screening we've understood about anxiety what we can do to deal with it but again eating habits is something uh, which a lot of women tend to overlook either it's because they want to lose weight and there are so many fat diets around or you know they again don't have time they're trying to make or cook things for their family what their children like what their parents like so how important is a healthy diet for women so i think uh, a healthy diet is one of the basic things that we are looking at and i think it's extremely important for you because uh, so for a healthy diet i don't recommend any you know uh, major diets what i simply say to all my patients is mm -hmm. that make sure that you get your daily dose of green vegetables okay make sure that you get daily dose of fruits so fresh fruits green leafy vegetables and natural foods yeah. stay away from fast fruits stay away from processed foods because these are extremely high in calories mm. they are extremely rich in their sugar content and will predispose you to obesity predispose yeah. you to diabetes so our Indian system of eating has always been very good, you know. Yes. So the basic fact that in our Indian culture, it's promoted that you have a proper cooked food, that you have green vegetables, that you have fresh fruits, mm -hmm. you have a certain amount of milk. So all of these natural foods, yeah. the Indian uh, foods which we normally have, is very good. Stay away from processed fast food like burgers, pizzas, mm -hmm. and all of these things. They're not good for your body, and in the long term can be disastrous. If you look at children today, yeah. childhood obesity is on the rise. Absolutely, it's yes. not only because children today they don't play. It's also because all the children today eat are pizzas, pastas, burgers, french fries. So wrong eating habits. I think that those are some very important points which we've discussed and it's time women really take on their health seriously. So on this note, we're going to be taking a really short break. This conversation will continue. Welcome back. We're talking about how women need to prioritize their health. Dr. Sharma, again, sleep is of utmost importance to health. Can irregular sleep increase the fluctuations in glucose levels? Yes, so uh, sleep actually is very important and uh, eight hours sleep for an adult and for a child it is approximately 10 hours of sleep which is a must. And uh, if we have irregular sleeping habits as we see that nowadays because of working late at night our IT people, people are working late in offices and they have this fragmented sleep which actually uh, creates a kind of uh, sympathetic drive and creates a kind of impaired blood glucose state which actually leads to development of risk factors like high blood pressure, diabetes at early ages. Obesity is very common because of these uh, irregular habits of sleep and diet. So this is very important to take care of uh, this and just, just take out time, have a schedule for your at least six to eight hours sleep, which is, which is very important, I would say, for prevention of diseases. Okay, sleep is of course key. Dr. Rao, again, there is this misconception that a heart attack is only a man's disease. Is that true? And are symptoms of heart disease the same in men and women? And how can we prevent heart disease in women? So yes, uh, there is a misconception that, okay. you know, it was earlier thought that heart attacks commonly occur only in men. Hmm. But that is not so. The number one killer of women also is heart dis disease. Now, Pre-menopause, women are to a certain extent protected from a heart disease, but then after menopause, the incidence of heart disease in men and women is almost the same. Now, uh, 
for a woman, the symptoms are very different because a woman does not complain of the typical crushing chest pain, which a man complains of when he has a heart attack. She will complain of non-specific things like, you know, a feeling of uh, discomfort in the back or in the shoulders or in the jaw. Uh, she'll complain of an uneasiness, a lightheadedness. Uh, sometimes she may just complain of extreme fatigue or lethargy. So her symptoms are not so typical. So it's important that we have a very high degree of suspicion when you talk about a heart attack in a woman and her symptoms are to be taken very seriously. Now, having said that, uh, how do you prevent a heart attack in a woman? The methods are the same. There are two things. One is lifestyle changes. So lifestyle changes, I mean that exercise daily, eat uh, healthy food that is fresh fruits, green leafy vegetables, cut down on uh, sugars, and uh, third is uh, take time to, you know, de-stress yourself because women today are under a lot of stress. So take time for yourself, de-stress yourself. Okay. And if by any chance you smoke or you drink, try to avoid those things or quit them altogether if you can. Mm -hmm. The other thing is other than lifestyle, we talk about know your numbers. Yeah. Know your numbers means know what is your blood pressure. If it's high, get it controlled. Know what is your sugar level. If that is high, if you have diabetes, please take measures to control it. And third is also look at what are your cholesterol levels. Please get a lipid profile test done, very easily available test. And if your cholesterol levels are high, take measures to cut down on it. So I would say these very simple measures which we can take can uh, grossly reduce the incidence and the prevalence of heart attacks in our women population. Okay, I think that's really well explained. Thank you. Moving on, Dr. Sharma, women hardly get time for themselves. We've been discussing that through the show. And most women are going out for work. They handle office and home simultaneously. Is it obvious that they are under constant pressure? And what stress-busting activities can you suggest to these women? So we just discussed that uh, the stress-busting activities which uh, one can follow, you can start with a morning regime of exercises, yeah, yoga or uh, simple meditation or uh, you can indulge in some creative art, you can indulge in, you, know, you can go hiking, you can go for strength building exercises and uh, dancing for that Zumba, it, it, it's a very uh, good stress buster, you get to meet your friends, you, mm -hmm. you do good exercises. You can uh, listen to music, you can watch a movie, yeah. and you can take breaks. Important is taking breaks from your routine schedule. You can take a small coffee break between your work schedule, or you can take a break for two or three days. Go, just go for holidays. And then once you come back, you are rejuvenated, mm -hmm. you are uh, mentally happy, and you do your duties maybe more, much more happily. So the important thing is to, to be happier at work wherever you are working. So the uh, important thing is to cut down stress and just do whatever you like don't stress yeah. yourself and just take care of your health which is very important i would say i think taking care of one's health is really important especially for women because they take care of the family dr Rao, again menopause is something which uh, one really doesn't talk about menstruation still people talk about it. menopause is again put aside tell us something does menopause actually reduce immunity of a woman i uh, couldn't hear the ending portion of your question no, uh, you said so, so yeah does menopause reduce the immunity of a woman you know when she's reaching menopause does that impact her health or her immunity so uh, let me talk to you a uh, menopause is yeah. a very important time for a woman in the same way that a menarche is right mm -hmm. so menopause is a time when our body you know uh, yeah. undergoes a lot of changes so um, you tend to get uh, hot flushes your stress levels tend to increase, your irritability tends to increase, the way you uh, respond to a situation, it also increases. At the same time, because I'm a cardiologist, I'd always talk about heart disease, your risk of having a heart disease also increases. And uh, that is the time that the bones of a woman also, they start getting weaker. Um, so yes, menopause is a time that you need to sit back look at yourself and start taking out more time to look after your health because yes that is the time that our body undergoes a major physiological change mm -hmm. it's not pathological it's physiological and that is the time that you need to start looking after your body more yes. that's important 
Yes, in fact, I think that's really, really important. Uh, Dr. Sharma, what are your thoughts on that? Of course, Dr. Rao has explained us, you know, I mean, why it's important. Any thoughts on how women can actually prevent or take care of themselves even more when they're reaching uh, menopause? So, uh, as Dr. Sarita discussed, so important uh, thing is to note down that there are major changes happening in your body. And uh, now, uh, your estrogen, protective estrogen is uh, no more there. And now your risk of having a heart disease is actually as that of, as of a man of your age. So now you need to be very careful for your risk factors like management of diabetes, high blood pressure and obesity. So now your BMI is less. So you cannot eat that, uh, that much that uh, young, uh, when you were young, you were eating. So you have to take care about all these things, eating right. This is very important. Mm -hmm. And uh, regular screening of cancers after certain age, that is very important because these regular screenings, they help in early detection of any risk factor and they can uh, diagnose a disease in early age, uh, early stage so that you can treat them effectively, which you cannot if you ignore your symptoms and when you, you are diagnosed with something in a later stages, then the treatment options are limited. Okay. So, in, important thing is to take care of your health go for routine health screenings and check your blood pressure sugar and weight and this is very important at this stage yes i think those are very very important tips for all the women out uh, you know who are listening dr rao just another thing you did say menopause uh, you know causes irritability you know women go through mood swings so any tips on how women can actually manage their mood swings better because that obviously affects the whole house so like I say for women all the time, mm -hmm. that it's very important that you learn to prioritize yourself. Remember that you are important and taking out time for yourself is not a crime. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not healthy, if you are not fit and you are not well, then you are not going to be able to give your 100% either to your family or to the community or to the workplace at which you work. Yes. So it's important that you take out me time, yes. time for yourself. Second, it's important that you learn to say no. The world expects us to be superwomen and to a certain extent we are. But we cannot always do everything all the time. It's okay to say no. Yes. The third thing is learn to relegate responsibility to other people mm -hmm. because you cannot do everything yourself. Yeah. It's important to relax. It's important to take time, enjoy with your family, with your friends if you want to. It's important to pick up a hobby which you enjoy. It could be as simple as dancing to singing to uh, walking or to running. But take out time for yourself to de-stress. I think some really, really important points out there, what you even said about me time, prioritizing one's own health, especially for women. Thank you all so much, Dr. Sharma and Dr. Rao for joining us today. Thanks so much for watching. News will continue on the other side.